Guys, 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 they found it. Science has made the biggest scientific breakthrough since the theory of relativity. Scientists have discovered anti-mass. Anti-mass is a mass so small, it can only be quantified in negative numbers. It was discovered inside the head of a YouTuber named Why I Hate the World. Uh, so he put out a video giving his thoughts on libertarianism. Judging by who it is, it's better to characterize it as anti-thought. Uh, uh, hit it! Libertarians are like normal right-wingers, but more crazy. They have all the misplaced smugness, misinformed idiocy, and deliberate ignorance of normal conservatives, but with a big heaping of conspiracy theory to make them more bat insane. My first issue here is that you make no attempt to distinguish between the different kind of libertarian you're talking about. Are you talking about capital L libertarians, as in libertarian party voters, or are you talking about anti-state libertarians, such as individualist narco-capitalists? But also, can we stop throwing around the term conspiracy theorist as if it's a derogatory term merely to discredit people questioning the evidence behind official narratives when you can't merely argue against their points? Yes, some of them, like David Icke and his reptilian theory, are stupid, but what about the Kennedy assassination? What about 9-11, MKUltra, Operation North Woods? Things where the official narrative were proven to be incorrect or there were so many holes in the narrative that it it would take an idiot not to question them. You start out this video with the Libertarian Party logo. The Libertarian Party represents libertarianism like the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, aka North Korea, is democratic, belonging to the people, or a republic. The only people you're going to convince about libertarianism with this video are going to be as equally ignorant as you. Also, that thing with the reptilians is completely true. Libertarians want to cut out social programs, but they also want to cut things like the Food and Drug Administration, the Department of Education, the Department of Agriculture, to name a few. Why not? Don't you? These agencies are wildly corrupt in the best case scenario. The welfare state has done immeasurable damage, particularly to black communities. Mothers actually get more money from the government for not having a husband, despite the damage single motherhood does to children. It's insidious child abuse being sponsored by the priesthood of statism, all because politicians need votes. But don't take my word for it. I'll have those voting democratic for the next 200 years. Libertarians and conservatives are not the same. Conservatives support using the government to establish monopolization, such as using stimulus packages for the stock market, bailing out failing businesses, subsidizing corporations, giving tax incentives to socially engineered desired behaviors, or creating synthetically low interest rates, all of which are things which libertarians are staunchly opposed to because libertarians want a free market, not one where coercion is used to establish state monopolies or to create favoritism for certain markets. Also, don't even get me started on the FDA, as there are independent private examiners who actually have an incentive to give proper reviews and examination due to competition. There are thousands of them even right now. Even before the FDA, companies would have private reviews of their products because quality assurance is good for marketing. The FDA is only practical use that can't be utilized by a private private companies monopolizing products behind certain manufacturers, such as in 1992 where the FDA voted 5-4 to four against letting the named corporation manufacture silicone breast implants only one week later to vote 7-2 to two to allow the Mentor Corporation to manufacture the exact same product. Out of the tools that the state uses to monopolize the market, the FDA is hands down the most egregious and in-your-face example of this, so naturally libertarian are opposed to this in favor of the market alternative. The only people who think that libertarians and conservatives have the same views on economics are ignorant chumps like yourself who just see both of them don't support welfare programs and think as a result, duh, duh, they don't like the welfare so they must be the same. Duh. The U.S. Department of Education was founded on October 17, 1979. Its fiscal year 2009 budget was $45.4 billion. With that money, U.S. students must be the best and the brightest. Nope. In 2009, out of 33 Western countries ranked, the U.S. is 22nd in science, 27th in math, and frickin' dead last, 33rd in reading. This despite spending more per student than every other Western country measured, save Switzerland. So clearly, if your goal is educating kids, 
the Department of Education is not how you do it. In the Department of Agriculture, one of the unsung villains in the United States government's blatant disregard for free markets and capitalism, the government offers to pay for crops per bushel or per pound at prices higher than the market will pay for. This incentivizes overproduction, and as a result, governments create programs to store and or dispose of this surplus. For example, peanut farmers in 2015 were paid the difference in reference price of $535 per ton versus the market price of $400 per ton of peanuts. This is a huge government subsidy to peanut farmers. The Congressional Budget Office in that year estimated subsidy payments to peanut farmers to be between $960 million and $1.9 billion in fiscal year 2018. In 1988, the USDA paid farmers to not farm 78 million acres of perfectly good farmland, all to artificially increase the price of agricultural goods. Do you have any idea what this means? Wasted farmland, perfectly good fields that go to crops nobody wants, or simply lie fallow and unused. This also means that your grocery store bill goes up. The priesthood of statism needs agricultural lobby campaign donations, super important to the future freedom and prosperity of our civilization. It's one thing to want to cut government spending on social programs because it goes against your political views. It's another thing to remove highly successful programs that provide vital and essential services which directly benefit the public, even saving lives in some cases. Ha! Social Security and Medicare being successful and necessary don't make me f laugh. Social security is literally just a Ponzi scheme, except in a normal Ponzi scheme it's your fault since you were the one who got scammed out of your money, while here it's taken from you against your will. First of all, it's an inherently unsustainable system as all social welfare programs are because they end up taking away any and all incentive for people to work, as evidenced by the fact that the majority of welfare recipients are work eligible. And the more people who receive benefits there are, the higher the government has to raise the tax rate. This is why the state has to keep raising the tax rate in direct response to the beneficiary rate increasing. Not only that, but they've always taxed and surpluses, which the state uses to spend on other programs unrelated to social security. This isn't even to mention that you could always just go to charity if you actually need help, and there's a direct correlation between the increase of voluntary private social spending and freer markets. So on top of there being no practical use for social security other than to spend on nebulous things the state would probably not have us be aware of, well, no, that's pretty much it. As for Medicare and Medicaid, Medicare and Medicaid are single-handedly responsible for destroying the U.S.'s healthcare industry because it created artificial scarcity of resources which increased prices drastically and regulations making production more expensive and commodities more difficult to put out to the consumers. That's not even to mention that they have no incentive to actually provide any services since they're guaranteed an income so they have virtually no marginal utility. And I also love how you just say that these programs are beneficial, yet you never even attempt to explain yourself. Classic passive voice. Do you really want to pull that? Took up my heartstrings about lives being saved? How much innovation was prevented because money was tithed to the state? How many diseases could have been cured? Congratulations, you treated grandma's diabetes at the cost of curing cancer. It's called hidden costs, you dithering idiot. The statist priesthood hoovers up finite resources for initiatives that don't even accomplish their stated goals. And that's assuming helping people is the goal of the welfare state, and it's not, as Lyndon Johnson suggested, vote buying. At this point, welfare is money the state pays to inner cities for them to not riot. It's ransom money. Once the statist clergy runs out of other people's money, well, I'll leave what happens to your imagination. <laughs> Some of the more wacky libertarian fruitcakes like to claim that any department, service, or agency that is not specifically laid out in the Constitution by the Founding Fathers should be eliminated. Yet these dipshits never seem to apply that morsel of idiocy towards any law enforcement departments, like the FBI, the CIA, the ATF, and so on, nor do they apply towards any kind of military spending. 
Actually, even statist libertarians are against those. Ron Paul, for example, openly opposed the CIA and claimed that their only purpose was to expand the U.S.'s empire. And he's right, because the CIA have been provably caught manipulating the elections of 71 countries, and I'm not even going to dive into some of their more notorious misadventures, such as the aforementioned MK Ultra, or how many times they've killed foreign leaders in an attempt to instigate regime change towards something the U.S. would find more beneficial. As for anti-state libertarians, well, of course we're against those. We're against the state. My lord, an actual insight? The reasons these departments, yes, all of them, should be eliminated are legion. Many reasons we listed previously. They are also unconstitutional, as are the law agencies you listed, so you're correct about that. The Founding Fathers did not want a standing military. Do you really think the Founding Fathers would approve of our current state of eroding civil liberties to keep us safe? Of course not. Most libertarians I know don't give a damn about the Constitution anyhow. You know, when did the Founding Fathers intend for us to have naked body airport scanners or military bases in Saudi Arabia? Thus, it seems, the libertarians share yet another trait with the conservatives because, like conservatives, they like to apply their standards and values only towards those things which they do not like. I have no idea what libertarians you talk to. Mr. Strawman, is that you? Okay, now you're just making sh** up to help slide along a straw man argument you constructed. You know, it's really f***ing bad when you have to outright lie as well as deliberately misrepresent your opponent's positions. Thus libertarians, like their conservative cousins, are hypocrites. Libertarians tend to distrust the government, which I actually think is a good thing. It's healthy not to automatically believe everything the authorities tell you. The reason for this is that the government is made up of people, and people tend to have self-serving agendas. To a libertarian, though, the government is untrustworthy simply because they're the government. The state, and the almighty government that it worships, is a territorial monopoly on violence. They gave themselves the legitimacy in initiating force against you. It violates the very rights it's supposed to protect. Property rights are violated through taxation, and the right to self-ownership is violated through drug laws. Our suspicion is an irrational hatred, but a sober recognition of things as they are. Don't fool yourself into thinking that these are glitches. No, the system is working as intended. Even if the government was made up of the most benevolent, well-intentioned people that could ever exist, it would not change the fact that the government, by its very nature, is coercive since it requires the violation of individual property rights and forced association to exist, and by design allows for the delegation of rights to its legislators which they themselves do not have. For instance, the government can decide whether or not people should be allowed to have a plant, and if you're caught with this plant, you would be arrested and thrown in a cage. Could you imagine what would happen to you if you decided to kidnap someone and put them in a cage because you saw them pick a plant that you didn't like? Also, objectively, the government can only destroy the economy since the fundamental purpose of a government is to provide services. And as the population expands, it needs more money to provide these services, which will require it to increase taxes since it produces nothing. And as a result, it will eventually eventually cannibalize the entire private sector due to the Laffer Curve, or to put it simply, it will need to tax people so highly that there will be no incentive to actually trade in the private sector, since people would be making virtually nothing and therefore they wouldn't work and the state would have to step in to either establish a centrally planned economy or try to create state corporations, which we're already in the US seeing very early stages of this process with heavy nationalization and monopolization of businesses through government programs. Of course, the natural problem with this is that without a private sector actually producing commodities, there is no price mechanism since there is no market and no supply and demand, meaning that central planners with the state can't properly distribute commodities and will literally end up as a result destroying civilization. Even if the government was perfect in every single way, and there was no way the government could ever potentially overreach, libertarians would still be opposed to it because the government itself is an evil coercive monopoly which harms our economy and violates our rights by merely existing. Thus, a libertarian thinks the government always lies 100% of the time and is always out to f*** you over. That's a pretty remarkable claim to make. 
I say the government's own numbers in regards to the Department of Education's 2009 budget, so clearly I don't think the government's lying 100% of the time. Oh crap, I must not be a libertarian then. However, the same philosophy extorts that private businesses and corporations never ever ever lie because it's in their best interest to be truthful, to maintain a good public image and make money. We're coming on to the evil corporations segment of our propaganda broadcast. I'll rise for our two minutes of hate. So if the What the hell are you even talking about? Libertarians are the most skeptical of private business. That's why we want the government out of the market, because all government does by entering the market is allow these corporations to take away any incentive they have to compete with each other by being subsidized or lobbying for regulations to kill their competitors. Or, in the case of the FDA, the government can just straight up not allow competitors to enter the market and attempt to shut them down if they try. When it comes to market, laissez-faire is the only kind of fair that exists. This leads to ridiculous situations where libertarians want to strip away needed government oversight from vital industries that have proven over and over and over again to be unable to regulate themselves. Ah, passive voice. Now you can't have sophistry without it, making bold claims without any citations or substantiation. I mean, it should be self-evident as to why this is incorrect. You're saying that as a solution to try and attempt to stop private businesses from mistreating their workers and creating shoddy products, you need an unaccountable monopoly with no incentive to provide the best service they can, or to even actually serve the people for that matter, that actually has the ability to initiate violence against any person or organization any time it so much as wants to for money, you must not have thought this through very much. Thomas Sowell said it best, it's hard to imagine a more stupid or more dangerous way of making decisions than by putting those decisions in the hands of people who pay no price for being wrong. When government bureaucrats grew up, their budgets grow. When businessmen screw up, they're out of a job. Who has the incentive to not screw up? I'll give you two guesses. Here's a hint. It's not the one with the territorial monopoly on violence. How many child slave factories or exploding oil rigs will it take to convince you people that corporations lie as a matter of business? Oh, f off. The people working in sweatshops are not slaves. In fact, the reason so many people work in them in the third world is because the countries which they exist in have highly oppressive economies, and therefore companies are able to basically walk in and take the entire labor market in those countries since there is no local competition. Now, am I saying that sweatshop child labor is ideal? Absolutely not. But the reason it even exists to begin with in the third world is because the countries where they're located in have so many government regulations and market hindrances that their labor market still necessitates 12-hour working days and child labor because their markets haven't been able to keep up with ours. Their markets haven't been able to innovate these things out of existence like ours have. The countries which have sweatshop labor are so heavily regulated that their borderline central planned, if not centrally planned. If these governments would simply get out of the market, then competition and innovation would get rid of child labor and long working days due to competitive hiring and the innovation of the means of production created by competitive practice. As for exploding oil rigs, lack of regulation is not even close to being the cause of that. There are millions of regulations on the economy, and oil is one of the most heavily regulated commodities. By the way, in case you're not already swayed by the evidence that regulation is only a tool of the state and corporations to monopolize the market, don't you find it interesting how the most valuable and sought-after commodities are always the ones which are the most heavily regulated? Child slave labor, exploiting oil rigs, gee, it's almost as if the government is incompetent at keeping people safe and their failings are being used as an excuse for yet more government. Thus, proving my earlier point about government failure being rewarded, but that would be silly. And that's just assuming we take your argument at face value and not treat it as the propaganda for what it is. I mean, slave labor? Really? Government incentivizes factories to be built in countries without child labor laws, something that actually benefits said country, mind you. Their economies aren't advanced enough past the need for child labor. Their families need those wages regardless of our higher Western sensibilities. 
In regards to the United States, well, there's this little thing called regulatory capture. As you make government regulation more stringent, it gives businesses more of an incentive to get their people into the bureaucracies, or pay off status priests to write legislation favorable to them. Now, are there problems with businesses today? Absolutely. But without government creating these incentives, they'll have only as much power over you as you want them to have. Even reducing the ability for the government to intervene in the economy fixes these incentives. If the government can cost you tens of millions of dollars, then why wouldn't you want to make sure that's working in your favor? If the government can cost you tens of dollars, then who cares? But what pisses me off personally most about these people is this dumbass idea that somehow taxes are equal to robbery. I don't know who came up with this bullshit, but it needs to end. Whoa now, who said taxes were robbery? Taxation is extortion. Semantics, I know, but the robber points a gun at you. The extortionist makes you believe there's a gun pointed at you. The idea is that since cops work for the government, and since you go to prison if you don't pay taxes, then essentially the government is using force to extort taxes from you, and it's akin to a mob boss forcing you to pay for protection. Actually, yeah, that about sums it up. The implied threat of violence for not paying your taxes is textbook extortion. But let me guess, this is wrong somehow. I'd be willing to wager that he's about to shift the goalpost by pulling some cliché argument which goes something along the lines of It's not theft because the state buys things with it that you use. Oh, f*** it. You know that's what he's gonna do. Just pay me now. This bullshit is idiotic on so many levels it's not even funny. First off, when someone robs you, you don't get a say in how much or how it's spent. We in the United States are represented by our elected officials. That was a rallying cry during the Revolutionary War. No taxation without representation. Theft is simply defined as the act of stealing. Stealing is when you take another person's property against their will. All you've done here is changed the definition of what it means for something to be theft, and then you've claimed that something isn't theft because it doesn't fit your new arbitrary definition, which conveniently excludes the example which worked against your position. As for the term representatives, how can they represent anyone when there's no evidence that we ever agreed to let them do anything for us. No, even if you're being generous, the most you can call them would be legislators, because not only do they not represent you or your interests, as many people have attempted to sue the government for malpractice and courts have ruled time and time again that the government does not have the obligation to serve you, such as the cases of Rock versus Gonzalez or Deshani versus Winnebago County, but you also have no say in the matter since there's no way to withdraw from the agreement. Agreement. So there's no way to argue that they represent you because you never gave any consent, nor do you have the ability to withdraw consent. You just said that when you're robbed, you don't get a say in how much is stolen or how it's spent. That describes taxation to a T. You're still forced to pay taxes under the implied threat of force. The fact that we have representatives in the status clergy is a red herring. You, as an individual, still have no input in how much is taxed and how it's spent. You are represented. Doesn't matter if the guy you voted for lost, the guy who won still represents you. So yes, you do get a say in how much you're taxed, in what manner you're taxed, how the taxes are spent, who is taxed, who isn't taxed, and who the taxes benefit. You don't like how they're spent? Vote in somebody else, but don't be telling me you have no say because that's a load of yeah, but you know what you can't do? That is opt out. You can't withdraw consent, and therefore it's inherently involuntary, and by extension it's coercive, since violence is being used to enforce something onto you which you never had a say in to begin with. It's called democracy, assholes. Yeah, well then f democracy. By the way, I still haven't heard an explanation from your dumbass as to how, from an ethical standpoint, democracy is any different than any other system of blatant, tyrannical ruling class. We just went over this. You don't have any input into how much taxes are paid or where it goes. The representatives are not your proxy. They're their own person with their own agendas that might match up 1% with yours. But you voted for them anyways because the alternative was someone with 0% of your interests. Are you actually represented in this situation? Of course not. You're also removing the priesthood of statism's agency by blaming the victims of their extortion. Somehow, my inability to get an anarcho-capitalist elected justifies them stealing 30% of my income? Perhaps you consent to being burglarized by living in a Heim crime neighborhood, or a woman consents to being raped by choosing to walk through a dark alley. No, I don't consent. 
My interests are not being represented. I don't want to spend decades of my working years for the government. Let's just call it for what it is. Involuntary labor. Taxation is slavery by another name. Why can't we as individuals choose what services we want to buy and how much to pay for them? Why can't we opt out? Secondly, it's not like taxes are some big evil oppressive action that only liberals and commies engage in. There have only been taxes in one form or another in every human society, on every continent, and every post-Stone Age culture on this planet since the beginning of time. Be thankful that you were born into a society that actually lets you have a say in what matter you would be taxed because 99% of all the people ever born didn't get that privilege. This is outright false. Ancient Ireland, Neutral Morsnet, Cospia, Zomia, or every human society prior to 3500 BC didn't have governments and had markets. I mean, you're an idiot on philosophy and rationalizations, why would I expect any different from you on your knowledge of history? Appeal to popularity and appeal to tradition fallacy. Two logical fallacies at once? Doing great. We've already established that I, in fact, do not have input in regards to my taxes. All you have proven is that the same extortion racket has persisted for thousands of years. People fought and died so that you get to decide these things in some way. Part of honoring that sacrifice is contributing your part to keep this country running. Don't try to manipulate me, you son of a bitch. If people fought and died to give me input into my taxes, then they died in vain. The only way I could really honor their sacrifice is to opt out. Taxes don't keep a country running, society does that. Taxes keep the state running, and the state is a voracious parasite on the back of society. What makes you dumb so special that you think you get to not pay taxes? What I hear from a lot of libertarians is, I work hard for the money. Yeah, well, newsflash for you dumb shit. everyone works hard for their money. So, when you work hard for your money, it counts more than when other people work hard for their money. He's devolving into profanity and using the appeal to emotions fallacy to provoke envy. I think we broke him, Iso. Now I think that this guy is just on a quest to try and create the most ridiculous arguments for the state against libertarianism ever. And of course I'm using the term arguments loosely, because a good 75% of the things he's said so far aren't even arguments, but rather are just ham-fisted pseudo-intellectualism with emotionally manipulative bullshit. Or he could just be a Poe. Is that what you're fucking telling me? So suddenly... You're more deserving of keeping your money and not contributing a damn thing towards society. Like, why? Because you're a libertarian? You know what? F*** that shit. Moron, you do realize that these services would exist without a state, right? No, of course you don't. Smarter people than you have made this same erroneous assumption. That being that the state is the only entity which can provide a society's infrastructure. Well, not only is that not true, but as noted before, due to the state's need for increasing taxation to sustain itself, and the fact that taxation in and of itself means that the state does not have any incentive to provide the best quality of service that it can, leaving the state with significantly less marginal utility than a private entity, not only is the state not necessary, but private corporations can do the same thing for much cheaper as many already do. Broke windows, we're looking for kicked in doors. He looks and sounds like a cop. At least it's quiet today. And he and his fellow officers are certainly armed like cops, complete with canine. And when most people hear private security, what do they think? They, they think um, mall cop. No mall cops here. They are security officers with SEAL security, and they've been under contract with the subdivision since November. We actually patrol districts and subdivisions like this one, uh, give them a little bit more security for their money. You know what, though? Yeah, it's our money. Some uninterested and uninvolved third party deserving 30-something percent of it is ludicrous. That's even assuming that they didn't hinder my earnings through labor laws, licensing, minimum wage, or any number of regulations that hinder employment. It's a very generous assumption. Screw you, government. You don't deserve anything. Plus this persistent fallacy that taxation is contributing to society? No, absolutely not. We've already established that the state is parasitic to society. The fact that you think you need to pay taxes to society tells me you think society is worthless. After all, if it was worth something to you, then you wouldn't consider taxation necessary as people would pay for it voluntarily. You think society has value? Great! Pay for it. You don't think society is worthless, do you? Do you? You did complain when the social services you depend on are cut like everyone else. I never see you f***ing dickheads refusing to take any of the benefits from this thievery. You know, where are the libertarians refusing to collect social security, huh? Where are the people out there with their signs going, I don't want social security? There aren't any. Where are the libertarians not taking advantage of the GI Bill? Holy shit. 
I didn't realize that people unironically made this argument. I always just assumed that this was a meme libertarians made up to make fun of statists. So, you're telling me that after this unaccountable monopoly on force steals our money and destroys the economy so that we have a harder time getting our money back, that we're supposed to be thankful because the legislators might be kind enough to hand out subpar services to the ones which we can't afford anymore with the money that they stole from us? Suppose I steal your wallet, and then buy a whole box of donuts with the money in it, and give one to you. Is it hypocritical for you to eat the donut and be against my stealing it in the first place? Of course not. It's not hypocritical for libertarians to accept government aid, either. The theft should never have taken place. It's perfectly justified of you to take back what was stolen, at least in part. That you would consider this to be hypocrisy says a lot about the level of unthinking that goes on inside that anti-brain of yours. Truth is, libertarians are a bunch of self-important, stuck-up, hypocritical assholes who only give a shit about themselves and hide behind some bull philosophy to justify their own greed. Is he talking about libertarians, statists, or baby boomers? I can't tell. No, I think he's just talking about himself, but projecting all of his faults onto his opponents. In real life, a nation run by libertarians would be a corporate dystopia, with a government that provided zero social services and zero protections from an unchecked corporate greed. F that and f libertarians, alright? I'm tired of these dumb f acting like their bullshit philosophy has any rational basis in the real world. Um, no, because the market regulates itself through competition. I'm not going to get into the fantastical dick measuring contest over my society being better than yours and all the amazing things which would happen as a result of the market being fully unregulated, because unlike you, I like to stick to reason and evidence, but considering that the market naturally innovates everything, as a result of competition, including making means of production cheaper and more efficient, it's very likely that in a few decades without a state, wage labor wouldn't even exist, since most people would be self-sufficient due to the market innovating wage labor out of existence and having made means of production so cheap and efficient that anyone can obtain them. Where do I begin? He's just fear-mongering based on his own irrational beliefs. How do you even get through to someone like that? What are they afraid of? Individual rights? Personal responsibility? Or is it just faith in status dogma that's so strong they can't imagine a functioning world without it? So I think that's the end of that. If there must be a government, then they need to put warning labels on people with anti-brains as mental carcinogens. Well, that was... Eh, I hesitate to say fun. Have you ever heard a dumb, and I mean a truly idiotic, college professor pretending to be knowledgeable about libertarianism? This was the bad cosplay of that professor. Eh, I don't know about fun, I just know that I feed on destroying the self-esteem of arrogant pricks who aren't as smart as they think they are. I prefer the salty goodness of liberal and commie tears. So, uh, how do I get out of here? This is a pocket dimension. There is no escape. In fact, I don't even know how you got here. Great, thanks! Check out my channel, Filthy Heretic, for all kinds of weaponized autism. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today. See ya!